Now, I want to go back to this despicable decision by Australia in our name by the Albanese Labor government with its UN vote that abandons Israel and rewards the terrorists of Hamas. We predicted it here on Thursday night with Michael Danby. I found it hard to believe that Australia would do this, but, but we have. I think it shames our nation. I think it invites more terrorism. And I think it demonstrates the Albanese Labor government has got to go. They are unworthy of this nation. I caught up with former Australian ambassador to Israel, now Liberal Senator Dave Sharma, and asked him what the reaction will be in Israel. Well, I think they'll be aghast, Chris. I think, um, you know, the last time this issue came up in the UN in 2012, the Labor government had proposed to vote against it. Uh, Julia Gillard was rolled in the cabinet by Bob Carr and we abstained on it. But to now vote yes for this resolution, uh, not in the company of the United States, not with the United Kingdom, not with Canada, not with Germany, in the company instead of Iran and Syria, North Korea, Russia, uh, they will be wondering what direction is Australia taking in its foreign policy under the Albanese government. And what does it do? What possible upside is there for Anthony Albanese and the Labor government and for Australia, except for trying to protect some votes in key seats in Australia? Well, I think the only way you can explain this is through domestic politics, Chris, because if you, if you look at our national interests and our foreign policy interests, the only possible lesson you can take out of this vote is that Hamas is being rewarded for the 7th of October terrorist attacks, that, uh, you know, they have moved the cause of Palestinian statehood along by conducting these mass atrocities. The resolution doesn't do anything to bring this conflict to an end. It doesn't do anything to encourage a return to negotiations. It doesn't call for the release of hostages or anything else. It basically says, you do this again, Hamas, and you'll get a state pretty soon. That's a terrible message to be sending. And I think the only way you can explain it is Labor is looking at their, you know, seat-by-seat -seat analysis and the threat of the Greens on the left, and they're trying to triangulate between the two. Well, this is what I said at the uh, top of the show. Uh, it is a reward for terrorism and it is Labor playing domestic politics, selling out our values and our foreign policy in pursuit of those domestic votes because surely after October the 7th, a two-state solution is further away now than it has been for many, many years. It is further away because a huge amount of trust has been, has been destroyed. You know, to, to make peace with another country you, or another entity, you basically need to trust its intentions, trust it to abide by its commitments. Um, that, has, that level of trust has been you know, drastically eroded by Hamas and the 7th of October attacks. I still have some hope that if Hamas can be defeated or when Hamas is defeated and if the Palestinian Authority reformed, revitalised, refurbished, can be put in place to govern Gaza, and if the Arab world, the Saudis, the Egyptians, the Jordanians can get behind them, there are still the prospects of an Israeli-Palestinian settlement. But these are all preconditions that need to be made. You can't go and end run these things with a resolution trying to create a Palestinian state out of thin air, and when Hamas is still the de facto governing entity in Gaza. Well, and that's right, the optimistic outlook that you portray then, that you relay then, of course, is preconditioned on first eliminating Hamas. Now, we've seen the threats about Absolutely. what's about to unfold uh, in Rafah. We've seen uh, Israel warn the Palestinians and millions of people have relocated, hundreds of thousands of people at least, probably more than a million people relocated. Rafah is, is a, it, it appears to be abandoned now, yet... Uh, yet America and Australia, other countries are saying hold back. I mean, Israel's not going to listen to that, surely. It's going to go in and try and take out the Hamas leadership. Well, I think that's how this war is brought to a close, Chris. And I mean, Israel's right to self-defence, which was, you know, made operational by the 7th of October terrorist attacks, extends to the defeat of Hamas. Now, if Hamas is hiding in Rafah, then Israel's military operations can extend to Rafah. If Hamas is in Khan Yunus, if Hamas is in Gaza City, and, you know, if, if you don't want Israel to go into Rafah, then... For heaven's sake, urge Hamas to release the hostages, lay down its weapons, surrender its leadership, and the war will be over. This is how this war ends. Yeah, look, I just think uh, what the Australian government has done here, it's, I, I find it so disgusting, so deflating. I think it shows a government that's unfit and unworthy to lead this country. Presumably, this is an issue. Even in Budget Week, the opposition will pursue this issue, this foreign policy question in Parliament? 
Absolutely we'll be pursuing it because it goes to the heart of our values, it goes to the heart of our foreign policy and our national interest and it also goes to the heart of our identity uh, as Australians, Chris, that, the, you know, that the sorts of decisions and the sorts of leadership or lack of leadership this government has shown on this issue throughout the past seven months has been astonishing. I mean, I never thought I'd see the sorts of decisions be taken that have been taken, the sort of language that has been used, be used. Uh, this is not a mainstream Labor government or a mainstream centre-left government. This is a, you know, a left-Greens alliance that we've got in taking positions on issues of our fundamental national interest. Yeah, well said, uh, Dave Sharma. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much, Chris.